Hi guys, let's talk hydro cracking today. Uh, hydro cracking is one of the processes that can help you deal with your gas oil cuts, the vacuum gas oil cuts. So these are the heavy and light vacuum gas oils. And some of your atmospheric gas oils or heavy gas oils, which you can find from your CDU. So you're wondering why we do the vacuum distillation? It is for this purpose. Because uh, you want to prepare your feed just right for the hydro cracker. Now other things you can put into the hydro cracker are the equivalents from the FCC unit or the vis breaker unit or even uh, TGU, thermal gas oil unit, which is by Shell, which is by Shell. And you have the coker as well. If you take this uh, boiling point cuts of this, uh, let's say 650 to 1000 F, you generally want to put them in a hydro cracker. Okay, and what's the difference between all these feeds? Now well, these ones straight from the CDU, the crude distillation unit, these are more paraffinic in nature, meaning to say they have a richer hydrogen content as compared to all these. These one will be more olefinic, more aromatic, which means they have less hydrogen. However, one thing is quite common among all of them, they still have rather high nitrogen uh, and sulfur impurities and other impurities like metals and silica as well. Now, this can be a problem for a hydro cracker because it tends to poison the active sites of the catalyst. And what's the catalyst use? It's usually amorphous silica alumina. They may dope it with some of the uh, metals as well. Uh, but it depends. But the key thing is that this, uh, in a similar way to zeolite Y, it provides acid catalyst sites. So it provides acid catalyst sites which help to promote cracking. On a hydro cracker, you want the cracking to happen and you don't want too much of your hydrogen to be used up for other things. You don't want to oversaturate your compounds and uh, waste your hydrogen and uh, get rid of uh, aromatics that you may or may not want. So it depends, yeah? So uh, for this video, we just talk about amorphous silica alumina and its role in hydro cracking. Okay? So for amorphous silica and alumina, you want your acid sites to be well maintained. So uh, what can actually uh, promote or you know poison the catalyst? What can actually poison the catalyst? Anything that eliminates the uh, acid sites, such as a basic compound, can poison this catalyst. For example, you have nitrogen, organic nitrogen. inside the, uh, what do you call that, in the oil, that can neutralize the acid and this will lose its functionality. The other thing is silica, which is not perhaps not as intuitive, but I can show you why just in a bit. So let's say you have a silica alumina, and here's the oxygen, silicon al alumino, uh, alum aluminum, aluminum, <laughs> aluminum, uh, atoms with a hydroxyl group. This is the active site. Okay, this hydrogen will play a big role in protonating or uh, being an acid to the oils. However, if you have silica, too much silica deposited to this active site, what happens is that the hydrogen can no longer attach itself to the oxygen to form that hydroxyl group. And therefore, this active site has become permanently deactivated. That's why if you have silicon, organic silicon, inside your oil, that can be quite a big problem. Okay, hence, you have to do something before you even start hydro cracking. You need to do a little bit of hydro treating first. Okay, so again, you have 
the vacuum gas oil, heavy gas oil feed and you heat it up and you send it through a hydro treater so it can be a HDS, HDN unit hydro, hydro denitrogenation, hydro desulfurization unit just to remove all you know all the catalyst poisons now just to take note for you sulfur is not a catalyst poison in this case because sulfur doesn't really do anything to the acid sites so you don't really have to worry about it however for you know stuff like reforming you have metal sites sulfur likes to eat metal or not eat metal it likes to deactivate and poison the metals so that's why nitrogen is more important, perhaps in this case, than sulfur. And silica is probably the worst of all. Okay, so let's get back. We have to hydro-treat our vacuum gas oil and heavy gas oil first. Then you, you can heat it up again and probably have the hydro-cracking reactor. This will be a fixed-bit reactor with your amorphous silica alumina. Now we started hydro treating before, so we are not going to uh, go too much into that. So the focus here is on the hydro cracking reactor. Okay, what are temperatures involved? Temperatures can be typically four hundred, uh, around three fifty to four twenty degrees C. You don't want it too high. If not, too much cracking will occur, then too much coking will occur, right? And then you want to have a high pressure so that it uh, makes the partial pressure of hydrogen really high. It means the hydrogen, there's a lot of hydrogen inside the reactor. And that drives the hydro cracking reaction. The linear hourly space velocity is about 0 0.65 per hour, meaning to say it is a, a little bit slower. Okay, so a bigger number means it passes through the reactor faster. A smaller number means it stays longer inside the reactor. So it's a liquid hourly, liquid hourly space velocity, LHSV. Okay, so we have a hydro cracking uh, reactor here. Now what happens inside there? Now you, you occasionally uh, have the catalyst poisoning because, I mean, there will still be some level of impurities. However, you'll have coke as well. Some amount of coke, but it's a minor process. That is so minor that you can just replace your catalyst every two to four years to get rid of all the silica and uh, alumina as well as the coke. So it's not that serious a problem, but you still got to replace it every once in a while. And of course, I forgot. There will be some hydrogen here with a compressor. Now, some of the videos I didn't uh, put in the compressor, uh, but you should know that, yeah, if it's a high pressure reaction, there will usually be a compressor. <coughs> if there's a low pressure reaction, there will usually be a you know, vacuum pump to like suck a vacuum, vacuum things out. Okay, So hydrogen can be fed in here, it can be fed in here also. However, in, at this stage, you probably want to do something first. Because after you hydro denitrate, denitrogenate and hydro desulfurize, you probably have a lot of contaminants inside the gas. So probably you want to have a separator here first to get rid of this and maybe you want to add in some fresh hydrogen feed. Then you send it through to the hydro cracker. Okay, so once, once the hydro cracking reaction is done, you have a mixture of H2 less NH3, less H2S, because most of it should be should have been eliminated in this reactor already, this hydro-treating reactor. Sometimes people call it the guard reactor for obvious reasons, because it guards the amorphous silica alumina from it getting poisoned. Okay? So, we have hydrogen here, then we have some kind of olefins, or oh, no more olefins, small paraffins, small hydrocarbons. So these are usually in the gas oil range, like gas oil. Okay, so hydrogen and this. So what do you need to do? You need to separate out your hydrogen first. Okay, so there's a complex system of separating. I'm not going to go into that in depth for this video. 
can probably do it in another video. But just know that there's, there's usually a complex uh, way to separate out all these things. Because, I mean, if you just use a fractionating column, you, have, you just have a, f uh, what do you call it? A separator and a fractionating column. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the, what you're effectively doing is to depressurize. You're depressurizing the reactor, which is at about 100 bar. And you know, pressure is energy. So when you actually get this hydrogen out, you want it as, at as high a pressure as possible so your compressor doesn't have to work so hard. Okay? Okay, so never mind. Let's just continue first with the flow diagram. Hydrogen can be recycled back along with some of the other dirty gases. Plus there'll be a fresh hydrogen feed. So you'll be pumped into the compressor and mixed with the fresh feed. So once the hydrogen is separated, you can separate out in a fractionator as per normal. And then you can send it to the various units. Alright. However, there is uh, something something that uh, there's a problem with this uh, method. Especially for the vacuum gas oil cut, the light vacuum gas oils, and the heavy especially the heavy vacuum gas oils. These are hard to hydro treat. Now there are two options you can consider with this. I mean, first, first is uh, you can, you know, ramp up the hydro treating conditions in let's say a reactor like this. Or you can, you know, beforehand, you can crack all these into a lighter gas oil first. So you can subject it to some thermal cracking beforehand to pre-treat this feed so that it is easier to hydro treat later on. I mean there's pros and cons to that because you'll be generating more coke and you'll be you know wasting lots of stuff. But let's just explore that design just for a little bit. So you have heavy gas oil, heavy vacuum gas oil, and light vacuum gas oil. Boiling point range, 650 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's about 380, I believe. 380 to about 520. Let me get a calculator up. So yeah, 350, sorry. 350 to about 535 degree C. So this range this range is I mean the hydrocranker feet. However at the you know temperature about eight hundred F as I found in the patent I found this in the patent uh, let me go and check US three zero two Six two six zero A. It was spoken. I mean, it was written in this pattern that you know, <coughs> if if. Hold on. Let me go and check again. Yeah. If let's say the uh, temperature, the end boiling point of the temperature, is in excess of about eight hundred degrees F. In excess of 800 degrees F, it is very uh, hard to uh, hydro treat. So that was what I was explaining earlier. It comes from this pattern. Okay. So what do we want to do? We want to reduce reduce the boiling point below this temperature. So what what can be done is that you take the you can separate it up into the 800 degrees F. Let me check the degree C. That's about 430. You can separate it out into the 800 degrees F plus, which is higher than 430. 
means all the all the you know boiling components more than 430 can be separated as such so in this this is, can be the other stuff like the heavy gas oils or stuff like that yeah okay this is the heavy gas oil AGO cut so this is about 650 to 800 F so 350 to 430 430 or 420 okay so what you do you can actually crack this thing first heat it up send it through a soaker or something like that or even use an FCC unit a coker thermal gas oil etc so what you'd want at the end of the day is to get less than 100 degrees F boiling point or less than 430 or in fact it's better if you get it yeah you get it uh, lower so it's easier to hydro treat so these two streams you can combine them you can send them to your gut or hydro treating reactor with a cobalt molybdenum catalyst or molybdenum nickel catalyst as I explained earlier you can feed in the hydrogen here you heat it up again and then you send it to a HC unit with the amorphous silica alumina inside okay so that's the basic schematic of a hydrocracker so of course you have to separate out the hydrogen to recycle and the rest you can just fractionate it and that is basically it for the design of a I mean the key uh, design of a hydrocracker the main reactors of course there are a lot of supporting units I haven't talked about and that is on purpose because I don't want to like overload you guys with too much data if you are interested you can go and look at the detailed design specs present in the patent US3026260A that is a three-stage hydro cracking process which is described here you can go look out that look out for that patent on your own it's a very detailed patent a very well explained patent and if you are interested to dive more into the details, please do take a look at it. Now that's all I have for you for you know the introduction to hydro cracking. And this is to deal with the uh, this cut, the heavy gas oil and the vacuum gas oil cut. Of course, there's another uh, branch of hydro cracking, or and then there's another kind of hydro cracking. Uh, catered for vacuum residues this is known as uh, residue hydro processing of course as, uh, as you know when you have different feeds you have to treat them with uh, different uh, reactant conditions different catalysts perhaps okay but that is probably for another video just to let you know there's more than one kind of hydro cracking available. Okay, that's about all I have for you. Thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed you know, the brief introduction to the hydro cracking unit. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.